EV sales are crushing. The bubble has burst. Depreciation slams them down to almost zero. Well, the scaremongers are out there now in full flow. So are they wrong? Well, Germany certainly has seen EV sales crash. Is that happening elsewhere? I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On, and to answer these and other similar questions, welcome to the deep dive. We need to get away from sensational media, self-interested oil industry offerings, and we need to seek out the totally independent, reliable sources. And few are as credible as the world's largest accountancy company, Price Waterhouse Cooper. Auditors to many of the major PLCs, LLCs, and global mega giants like Ford Motor Company, Exxon Oil, and global providers of private equity funds and pension investments. They offer verified independent reports to those considering investing in the EV revolution, along with a range of their own investment products. As the world's largest, they have almost unlimited funds to carry out their own proper research and issue their own professional reports and reviews to interested parties like banks, pension funds and private investors. Well, let's have a look at what they say in their electric vehicle sales review Q3 2024, now that the results are in. There is a link to this down below to the full report, so check it out for yourself. And especially be on the lookout for some of their absolute shock bomb cell predictions later in their report. No, it's not clickbait. Several of these will actually shock you. Well, just out of interest in this report, they classify EV as any vehicle with a battery in it that contributes to the powertrain. So that would include HEV uh, hybrids, uh, PHEV plug-in hybrids, REEV, which is the new one, which is range extended electric vehicle, and BEV, which is battery electric vehicle. So individually, BEV is 100% electric, battery only, no fossil fuel involved. PHEV is obviously the plug-in hybrid where the car can drive on either 100% petrol or 100% battery or any combination in between. HEV is hybrid electric vehicle where the car drives only on the fossil fuel, but uses electricity to just increase efficiency. An REV where the car drives always on 100% battery and uses a petrol generator as a range extender, and that just purely recharges the battery while it's on the move. And of course ICE, where drive is always provided solely by fossil fuels in an internal combustion engine. Well, quoting directly from their opening statement, quote, Back in the first quarter of 2023, 28% of vehicles sold in all analysed markets were EVs, including BEs, PHEVs and hybrids. By the third quarter of 2024, that proportion had risen to 41%. Although progress is not uniform across all markets, the overall trajectory of the EV market continues to inspire optimism. Much of the rise in market share can be explained by the rapid expansion of the Chinese PHEV market, which has more than trebled in size since the first quarter of 2023. In total, more than 3 million EVs were sold in China in Q3 2024, representing more than half of the total in all analysed markets. China's PHEV exports have also shot up, more than doubling during the first three quarters of 2024, year on year. The European Union believes that state subsidies have awarded Chinese OEMs an unfair cost advantage, and barring a last-minute reversal, will soon impose tariffs on Chinese-made imports. However, as our Analyst Insights section shows, some Chinese manufacturers are poised to fight back, developing production plans in Europe in order to circumvent the tariffs. Other countries and regions have also boasted success stories in the third quarter. EV sales are dominant in the top five European markets, comprising 56% of all new registrations. More than a third, 35% of all vehicles sold in these markets, were hybrids. The United Kingdom is currently the most buoyant within the European top five, with BEV market share alone now standing at 
The United States market also continues to develop steadily, with total EV market share passing 20% for the first time in Q3 2024. Norway, however, continues to beat all comers, reaching a BEV market share 95%. Amazing. The imminent tariffs, which will apply on top of the already existing 10% import tax, are set individually for each manufacturer and are based on various factors, such as the level of cooperativeness with the EU's anti-subsidy investigation. The tariff rate will reach as high as 35.3% for Chinese-made BEVs. Some European and Chinese brands automatically received the highest rate so far, as the models were not yet launched during the discussion period. The tariffs currently only apply to fully electric passenger cars, meaning all other powertrains and all commercial vehicles continue with only the existing 10% import tariff. Resistance to tariffs from EU member states has arisen for two main reasons. First, the tariffs will not only affect Chinese OEMs, but also European brands that produce vehicles in China and import them back to Europe, such as BMW, Renault and Volkswagen. Second, it is feared that the tariffs could provoke retaliatory actions, thus potential, potentially harming European brands in any industry seeking to expand their operations in China. However, Chinese OEMs are poised to fight back. They are expanding their production in Europe to circumvent the punitive tariffs. End of quote. Well, I did warn you it was rather comprehensive and independent. This is just the opening statement with an overview. The full report runs to 23 pages. I'm not going to read it all to you. Uh, but if you want to read it yourself, I strongly advise you do so. Check the link down below. Okay, starting in Europe, the state EVs of all types are now clearly in the ascendancy. The top five by market share is now 56%, of which hybrids were 36%. Both BEVs and PHEVs suffered year-on-year -year decline, while hybrids continued in impressive growth of 16%. The fall in BEVs is almost exclusively down to Germany, which abruptly and without warning removed any subsidies at the end of 2023, leading to a 45% drop in new EV sales in Europe's largest car market. Despite all this, the BEV share of the market rose to 17%, the best result so far. Even in a crash, the results are still good. UK now has the highest BV share in Europe at 20%. Yeah, one in five new vehicles sold is now a full 100% battery EV. Spain and UK have bucked the trend with growth of 20% for each during September. In fact, new BV registrations in the UK exceeded those in Germany during Q3, 103,000 to 92,000. That's impressive, as while most of Europe saw a year-on-year -year decline, UK had a really good Q3, up by 18%. Total UK market share of EVs is now 66%, beating the nearest challenger, France, with 62%. Norway and Netherlands also recorded record sales year-on-year, uh, -year with 19% and 11% respectively. Sweden came top, PHEV sales with 21% market share. Overall total BEV sales were up 11%, total PHEV sales down 36% and HEV up 28%. EV new sales growth in Q3 was 2%. Yeah, still growth. In China and Asia, it was a totally different picture. No hesitancy there. China grew 33% compared to Q3 2023. Again, PHEV featured heavily up 79%, BEV up 15%. More than 3 million BEVs and PHEVs were sold in Q3. Also rising rapidly are EV exports, up by a staggering 110%. China is certainly leading the way. BEV, PHEVs, like everywhere else in the world, have come off the boil. Just like here in the UK, where our budget just signed the death warrant for PHEVs. Accepting that while they look brilliant on paper, with Mars per gallon in the two to 300 mile range quoted, in reality, the vast majority drive exclusively on petrol for over 90% of the time. People just can't be bothered to plug them in. In China and Asia, their decline is far more advanced. They are ahead of us. 
Just an interesting thought, if the best-selling EV in the UK is currently a PHEV and they're being taxed out of the market and losing beneficial subsidies and incentives and the sale of new ICE cars will be banned totally in just five years' time, what are they going to buy when their current leases or finance packages expire? And no, the answer's not an ICE car. Well, a mighty US of A also saw overall BV sales grow by an impressive 11% in Q3 2024 compared to Q3 2023. BV share now stands at 9%, not our impressive 20%, but a pretty decent figure. PwC PricewaterhouseCooper predicts sales and market share will continue to increase with the IRA offering $7,500 for BEVs, making them cheaper in many cases than both ICE and PHEV. Total EV share of the market has now exceeded 20% for the first time ever. Well, a quick summary of share of EVs versus ICE finds Europe 54% EVs, 46 ICE. China's 47% EVs, 54 ICE. America is 18% EVs, 82% ICE. A staggering figure. Well, looking to 2029, just five years away, they show that EV sales will almost double what they are today. They also report a new EV on the scene. As I've reported in recent videos, that's the REEV, or the Range Extended Electric Vehicle. These, in case you haven't seen my video, are 100% electric driven. They always drive on battery and electric motor, but they have a petrol generator in the boot that recharges the battery while you're driving along. Well, PwC forecasts Europe will be 20% EV in 2029, China 39%, um, um, America, NAFTA, North American Free Trade Association 15%, Asia, excluding China, 20%, and REEV is going to take 5% on its own. For pure 100% battery EVs, they predict Europe will be at 24%, China 42 NAFTA 18 and Asia 13%. And they see an interesting drop to 3% for the REEVs. Well, as a summary by me, I believe this shows EVs will dominate over the next five years, while PHEVs will see a significant drop in Europe to almost be on the point of disappearing. They had the day they've been found to be lacking. HEVs will still figure quite strongly, and REVs, well, they make significant inroads. This is also not a long time scale. We forget that the COVID peak and lockdowns are now four years ago. Seems like yesterday. When production of new EVs, we see a strong growth in all sectors with an overall growth from about 30 million in 2024 to almost 120 million in 2029. By powertrain, BEVs will see steady positive growth rates for quite a few years yet before easing to a steady but persistent increase. The growth rate for PHEVs is already declining alarmingly, and while they will still sell more, the growth will quickly drop to negative. In other words, the reign is over within five years. To come over the next three years, these are interesting. Highlights include Alfa Romeo Alfetta 2028, Q10 e-tron 2028, IX5, 6 and 7, 26 to 28, Cherry Fullwind 25, not yet on the streets anywhere, Ferrari Roma 2028, Lamborghini Lanzador 2028, Lotus Exige 2026, Rolls-Royce Cullinan 2027, first of the Rolls-Royce BEVs, not hybrids. Tesla Cybercab, that's a shock to the system, 2026. This is an ind ind independent company investigating very thoroughly into the market and what they think are going to happen. They believe Tesla will be launching their Cybercab 2026. Yeah. Okay, uh, then we finish off with VW ID1 2028. I have to say, though, there must be doubt that VW will actually exist in 2028. Well, bookmark this page and let's look back in two or three years' time what actually happened, because these are predictions. Well, the sales data for France, Germany, Italy, Spain and UK, that's the five. Uh, it's very interesting in that it not only shows the figures, but to me, it shows the source of their data. See, all too often the source of any article, any YouTube video is a single newspaper article or an anonymous source or a single trusted authority. Here we have, and no, I haven't heard of most of them, 
a massive list. KBA, SMMT, yeah, I know that one. That's the British Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders. SMMC, ANFIA, ANFAC, SCB, OFV, RAI, Auto Schweiz, Statistic Austria, CAAM, CPCA, J... Well, that actually covers about half of them. There's no wild speculation going on here. No media buyers supplying figures that are designed to boost sales of the media. Uh, these are definitive data. Now, the negative out there points always to Germany, and they say EV sales are collapsing. Look at Germany or Italy. They're closing down EV factories, making the Fiat 500e, for example. And these are valid points to make. But to extrapolate from these hand-picked outliers and predict the end of EVs is just total fantasy. The world is very much bigger than Fiat in Italy or Germany. EV sales are growing very nicely. New factories are coming online all the time. There's a massive upheaval over tariffs, both in Europe and America, and that might worsen if Donald J. Trump gets back into power. Seems he likes tariffs. But looking at the figures, America is a tiny player in the world of EVs. Even Europe's not united. They may have introduced China tariffs, but the biggest market in Q3 2024 for EVs turns out to be the UK. Well, we're inside geographically, if not the EU. And our recent budget states very firmly that the UK seeks to build on an international market without tariffs. The UK is not going to follow Europe with Chinese tariffs. I believe the exciting time for EVs is still just a few years away. Many people today are buying or leasing or getting EVs as company cars, and many of those agreements are two, three, four years long. So, looking forward, say, two or three years, beginning of 2028, I ask you what they will be buying. PHEVs will be tailing off rapidly by then, rather like the Wonder Boy that was previously diesel. Remember that? We all dashed out and went diesel, then we found diesel gate found they weren't actually that good in the de pollution department either. So there's going to be no PVs on the market, um, and we're only just a uh, one year away from a total ban on the sales of new ICE-only cars. Who will be brave enough to invest their money there? So what do we have left? Well, OK, a lot of you tell me hydrogen from Toyota. <laughs> yeah, the real answer I'll leave to you. But I said fairly recently that the growth of BV sales is not the most important feature of this transformation in our transport system. Rather, it is the collapse of the old system that makes the biggest difference. That collapse is already in full motion, as we see from VW shutting factories, and in just three years will be in full flow. In five years, it will make absolutely no difference if the 2035 hybrid ban even still exists. EV deniers and sceptics, shout all you like. I know you will, but please somebody produce some confirmed, comprehensive, independent data to back up your wild claims, statements and predictions. Germany has stopped buying EVs is not only not enough, it is in fact no longer true. Sales there are starting to pick up nicely. I'm Dave. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you would like to, you can leave a comment down below as to where you think the market is going and what you think of the uh, PwC review. As always, if you'd like to see more, you click the subscribe button. Uh, that does an enormous amount of good for us with the uh, YouTube algorithms. We are still a relatively small and young channel. And a massive, massive thank you to all our Patreon members who really do keep this channel going.